What does this bring to our nation's defense? So it's a great day anytime I get to spend the day with our guard. And this morning we had the Ops Center for our Air Guard. That's for the Happy Hooligans, the 119th. The key there is that's a new state-of-the-art $17 million dollar 17 and a half million dollar facility that we're breaking ground on and that will be a new op center so remember we are in the fight every day with our air national guard with the reaper globally we operate we have very good clients let me put it that way and we have to serve them you know uh, you know with no interruption so the key is we'll build this new op center state-of-the-art and they'll be able to go from the existing facility right into it with no interruption in the mission and the point I made this morning was our guys are in the fight every day uh, for armed services and for a lot of other things, and they have they can't have an interruption in that mission. And just like in Afghanistan or anywhere else, they have to be available all the time to help us get the job done, and they are. And that's why it's so important we got that facility done. And now here we are. This is the readiness center. Uh, this is our Army Guard. The point I made here uh, is that this facility isn't just about the combat role these guys play. And there's about 400, almost 400 soldiers that will be based out of here, about 100 vehicles. But it's all the other things they do. Think about it, fire, flood, tornado, COVID. Anytime you need help, you call the guard. And that's why this new facility is so important because it goes to that combat mission and they have a high ops tempo, but it also goes to all those times we need them for natural disasters and other emergencies. We're one of 50 states, so obviously. There's battles like this for uh, military assets in every state. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, these were funded by the, uh, uh, the, the uh, National Defense Act, which uh, there's a smaller and smaller footprint every year. So this is, this is a win for North Dakota that is pretty rare these days, right? Yeah, it's a huge win, $17.5 million facility for the Ops Center. Uh, we actually had about $32 million uh, appropriated for this facility. They came in under budget, on time under budget. Go figure, the guard, 29 million ahead of schedule. Way to go, guys. But, you know, Kevin Kramer serves on armed services. I'm on defense appropriations. That combination really helps when it comes to getting these things done. Just like on the Ops Center, we're a year ahead of when we were supposed to get the funding, and so we should be able to finish it in 23. And again, when you realize what our guys are doing, you realize how important it is that they have the most high tech facility because these guys are the tip of the spear operating globally with a mission that's incredibly important to our country. You're talking about operating globally. We're all watching with uh, great concern over what's happening in Afghanistan right now. I want your latest on uh, yeah. the president's announcement today that the deadline will not move. It will remain 831. Is that the right decision? No, it's not. And as you, you know, I, I both this morning's event and again at this event, I talked about how the administration has, has not done a good job uh, with this whole uh, Afghanistan effort they need to do better and uh, I've made that very clear to them uh, ha as has Senator Kramer uh, I'm doing it again today joining with Senator Cornyn and I've joined with Senator uh, Rubio with Senator Inhofe in expressing look we have to have the support for our military that's in there so that they can get the job done and they need the resources and the people to do it we need to get all of our American uh, people out of there and we need to uh, get our Afghan uh, Afghani uh, allies out and we need to have the force there that's able to do it and we need to have the time that we need to do it and it needs to be up to the United States and our military to tell the Taliban what we're going to do not have them tell us how it's going to go. Is Joe Biden fit for office right now demonstrating what you what, I mean what you've seen him demonstrate in the way of leadership on this situation? Clearly uh, th th this is an example where he has not done the job and we're seeing the consequences of it and he needs to be engaged on this and he needs to you know we've demanded a plan and it's not all the things I just not just those things I mentioned but how about all the equipment how about all the equipment now that uh, is going to fall into Taliban hands unless we do something about it? And so we are calling on him to give us a plan, not only to show us how our military is going to have the resources they need to get the job done, but how we're going to make sure we get our Americans out of there, how we make sure we get our Afghan Afghani allies out of there, and what are we going to do to make sure that the, the Taliban doesn't have that equipment and can use it against us in this war on terror. Also. Uh, it's very important that right now uh, we get an understanding in terms of what they're going to do to make sure that in the future, in this war on terror, we're going to be able to disrupt efforts on the part of the Taliban, the Haqqani Network, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and others to reconstitute and attack 
uh, America and our allies. That's got all these things have to be dealt with and we have to continue to press it and we're going to continue to do it. The other thing I would say is my office and other offices are working to try to help people that have asked for help uh, in terms of, of getting either friends or family out of there, be they Americans or our, uh, you know, uh, Afghani allies. And so we're working on that as well. I noticed today that you have uh, quite a contingent here of North Dakota's finest all in, uh, in their camel in their war fighting uh, approach and uh, I'm watching briefing after briefing from the Pentagon and uh, generals with a whole lot of uh, uh, bling on their uniforms maybe maybe it's time for uh, you know the Pentagon leadership to go the way of uh, the North Dakota f the, the way here and get in war footing huh? you know that's it nobody does it better uh, than our guard um, and but I mean all of our military look our military is fabulous it's the best military in the world in every way you can think of the best men and women in uniform the best technology we can do all these things but it takes leadership and that's where the administration has failed here and you know that's where we're calling the administration to give our troops what they need and the support to get this mission done and you're right nobody does it better than the North Dakota National Guard and you know 10 years as governor I I mean, I love these guys. I can't tell you the number of times that I uh, called on them to help us here in North Dakota, but, I, but I've been over there with them. I've been to Afghanistan multiple times. I've been to Iraq multiple times, other places, and our guys always set the standard. They're the best. Thanks, Senator. Good to be with you. Thanks, Scott.